Greetings to all of you that are at the 2016 Oklahoma Academy Alumni Weekend. In case you don't know me, my name is Cosby Janel Sul Garcia. I was part of the 2004 class and I am from Mexico. Today I am not greeting you from Mexico, rather from Ankara, Turkey. And um, let me tell you a little bit about um, how I ended up here. Um, so it happens that in the summer of 2014, I was granted a scholarship to do my master's studies in Ankara, Turkey. And um, after praying about it, I went ahead, accepted the scholarship, and in September of 2014, I moved here. Um, since then, several things have happened. The Lord has been uh, great. Um, as far as academic life goes, um, my first year here was to learn, was devoted to learn the Turkish language. So from the school year of 2014 to 2015, um, in that school year, I took Turkish classes um, Monday through Friday. And at the end of the school year, in June of 2015, uh, by God's grace, I was able to pass my Turkish exam, which then qualified me to move on to the next step and start taking my master's classes, courses. Um, all of last year, which is 2015 to 2016 school year, I was taking all those courses fully in Turkish. That was very challenging, but thank God I was able to pass all of them, which then qualified me for the next step. And this, skill, this school year, um, the task to tackle is my master's thesis. Um, thankfully, I will, I'll be able to do that in English, but of course the research is done in Turkish and in English and um, um, already God is, has been good and I have a great thesis advisor and I'm just getting started with that though. But this is not the most exciting part about what has been happening here in, for me. I'd like to tell you what God is doing in this part of the world. So to give you a little bit of a context, let's, uh, let's clarify that Turkey is part of the Middle East and North Africa Union. Um, this union is composed by 20 countries which have a very large population and all of them together have approximately 50 million people of population. Um, if we go smaller and now we focus on Turkey, um, Turkey has about 79.5 million of people and let's be even more specific, Ankara has about 5.5 million people living here. And um, although that those numbers may seem overwhelming, um, God has been really working here, even before I got here. Um, I was not here when a small group got started in a home. Uh, just five people started to get together in the year of 2013. And three years later, almost three years later, now in 2016, uh, but we are so thankful because now we have a small group that is uh, on the process of becoming uh, the first um, Seventh-day Adventist Ankara Church here. And now we have 35 to 40 uh, constant members attending and we have several ministries running. We, we, are, we are getting organized and I mean, God has been really good. We can see how in a matter of three years he has done a lot. Um, uh, one of the things that has a, been a very big blessing is to be able to put into practice what I had learned in theory. Uh, when you grow up in the church, um, you're able to see firsthand what leader, leaders in your church are doing and how they're, you know, uh, just working in the church, serving with all of their talents. But when you're in a big church, um, you know, there's a lot of other people that have more experience than you, and usually they're the ones um, doing all the work. And you can get a little bit of experience, but it's not the same uh, compared to when you're in a small group. In a small group. So, um, something that the Lord has granted me here is the opportunity to be, uh, you know, just part of the leadership that is uh, serving in the church, and how you know, get to see firsthand what um, what decisions are being made and how God is showing us every step of the way um, how to move forward 
and um, sharing the good news with others. So something very peculiar about our church is that out of those 35 to 40 um, regular members, 95% of us are students, whether they're doing their university students or, or um, master students. So we are a very young church and um, most of us are foreigners, but thank God there is also some locals that are attending and they're also learning uh, about what the Bible says and what God is doing uh, for us. So um, that has given us uh, an opportunity to, to work in a different way because um, all, we are all from different countries, from different backgrounds, we have different native languages, yet God is amazing and making sure that among all that diversity there is unity and we can work together towards the same goal, which is being a blessing to those around us. So um, let me tell you that um, one of the things that the Lord has really blessed us with here is um, a community ministry that has gotten started in February of this year, 2016. Um, let me tell you in a very few words that right before that, um, the church was at a point that we had noticed um, we were already um, strong as a group. We had become a family. We had a very good bi biblical foundation. We had grown in the way that we were now organized and in the matter in, in, in the way that we were running the church and that it was no longer time to let me let me rephrase that that now it was time to move to a next step that even though we had been nurturing ourselves and that was very good that was something necessary now it was time for us to go reach outside of the church and so with a lot of prayer we asked that God would show us a community that we could minister to now we were very specific and we told God God please give us something that we can handle because we are few and we are students we don't have a lot of funds so show us what kind of people we we can reach we can touch um, and God was amazing he responded uh, according to exactly what we needed and he granted us a community that has about 20 homes and 20 different families um, the conditions of their homes are are, are bad uh, there's been like a lack of development in their area yet uh, all of them they're locals and which it was something very important for us that we were able to touch the lives of of local Turkish people so in February of this year uh, God opened up the doors in a very miraculous way. I mean, you can imagine that a group of people show up to your place and they tell you that although they're foreigners, they're interested in your well-being and they want to help you with no strings attached. That sounds very weird. And of course, some of the members of the community at first were distrustful and they were wondering why on earth we wanted to help them. Of the, the first thing they wondered was, well, do you want something in return? Is this for some sort of advertisement? Is this for some credits in your, at your universities? And we just told them that this was something that we were used to doing in our home countries. And now that we were here together, we wanted to keep um, living in that way. That it was part of our lifestyle and that no, we didn't want anything in return. So um, God used key people in the community to, to put the distrust aside and to open their homes and truly sit down with us to see what were our plans and how we could um, meet some of their needs. So since last February, we were able to start English lessons. One class for five elementary school kids and uh, one for teenagers, for five high schoolers, and praise God, we were able to keep that those classes all of last semester. Once a week, we were meeting them, and as time passed by, of course, our friendship bond uh, has grown even tighter, and 
um, we, we've seen God's hand at every single step. Um, we were all, also able to start a programming, a com, uh, programming class with some of the high schoolers. And um, of course, we had to stop those classes during the summer break. And the school year is just beginning here in Turkey. Um, two weeks ago for most of them, for most of us. And um, now we're getting started to retake our lessons. And um, also, we've, uh, we've realized that a very important uh, ministry that we can get started there is the comprehensive health ministry. Um, there's needs among the members there uh, to find out about, you know, how God intends us to have health and to have an abundant life and how we can have a better lifestyle. And um, thankfully, some of our members have been trained in some um, health um, education um, program recently and we are seeing that God is uh, ready to do even more in that community that he is getting ready to open up other doors and um, I ask you that that you keep that in your prayers um, this is in a nutshell uh, what God has uh, enabled me to experience in the last two years here um, I am humbled by the way he is leading all of his people in this part of the world um, in our Middle East and North Africa region baptisms are taking place God is bringing more and more people that are willing to work for him to share with others the good news of salvation so I ask you that you keep this part of the world in your prayers uh, remember there's so many people here and they in this area they speak Arabic uh, Turkish, Farsi, French, and they also need to, to hear the good news about the God of love that we have and how he's coming very uh, coming back very soon and um, I pray that he continues to use uh, uh, all, the, all the people that he has here and I pray that he continues using you wherever you're ministering and whatever you're doing whether you're studying or working may God keep blessing your life abundantly and May you enjoy this weekend over there. I'll be praying that it's a big blessing to all of you. And all the best in all of your activities. I send you my love, my prayers. And may God bless you. Which in Turkish is Tanrı Sisi Bereketlesin. Hi, I'm Lori Cooper Ilchuk. I graduated in 1996 from Oklahoma Academy. And from there, I went to Southwestern Adventist University in Keene, Texas. Um, I prayed really hard about what God wanted me to do in my life. Um, it was very important that I followed his path. And so in various ways, he led me to um, the field of physical therapy where I could serve people, ease their pain and suffering, and make their, overall their life better. So um, I now live in East Tennessee and I have three children and a husband and he has led me to open up a clinic in Jonesboro Tennessee where we have been here for two and a half years I'm very grateful he has blessed it beyond measure um, we have two and a half therapists and um, many patients that come in and out they become our friends and our family here so I will give you a tour of the clinic and you can see what we do. I don't have patients here right now just um, for privacy reasons. <clears throat> so I treat people uh, with all kinds of orthopedic problems. They lay here on the mats and they exercise. Okay, turn it this way. <clears throat> Um, they exercise, we move their joints, we get them feeling better, and then they go home and um, carry out the rest of their life. They often come back and say hello, or even come back for other um, problems. We see neck pain, back pain, um, all kinds of nerve disorders um, and joint disorders. So it was nice talking with you and I hope that you guys have a wonderful time this weekend. I wish so much that I could be there, but unfortunately I'm not able to at this time. So 
Have a good weekend. Greetings and happy Sabbath, Oklahoma Academy. My name is Carlos Cirillo. I'm a graduate of 2004, and today I want to share with you what I've been up to since I left OA. First of all, um, I went to the Amazing Fact College of Evangelism. After that, I went, I did some Bible work for almost one year. After that, I attended Southern Adventist University where I got my degree in theology. And after that, I decided to come to the other side of the world, literally the other side of the world, Thailand. So currently, I am a Bible teacher at an Adventist school in Bangkok, Thailand. And a lot of people think I live in the jungle, but no, I don't live in the jungle. I actually live in a pretty big city and it has a lot of things like uh, any major city. But of course, the important part of the work here is that we had a chance uh, to share you know, the Bible with many, many people who are not Christian. Just to give you an idea, okay, my school is a rather large school, 1,457 students enrolled this year. In my class alone, I teach grade 10 Bible class. I have 131 students. So that's probably double the size of your whole school, right? Maybe, maybe more than double the size of, of OA right now. I don't know. But, you know, it's been an interesting uh, experience because coming here, you know, to a Buddhist country, let me remind you, 95% of my students in my class are Buddhist. Okay, the other 4% are Muslim and Hindu. And only about 1% of my students in my class are Christian. Okay, I have one Seventh-day Adventist student in my class this year. So you can see most of the people that I teach don't even really believe in God. So it's really a challenge. It's really been a very interesting experience to think outside of the box, to think outside of the regular, everyday Adventist uh, way of thinking. Okay, you have to really... Uh, find ways to help people understand why Christianity, why they should believe in God. And I'm telling you, it's not very easy. It's not very easy, but this is the challenge that I have every day. And I've been here already for seven years. And of course, um, I enjoy the challenge, but I request your prayers. I pray that you will pray not just for me here, but there's a lot of people living in countries you know, in the 1040 window where it's very difficult to actually uh, teach about Christianity in a way that people can understand and are receptive to it. So I hope that you will spend your time in Oklahoma Academy in a way that you will, you know, lay a very solid foundation about what Christianity means to you. Because once you leave, once you're influenced, you know, by the people around you who are not Christians, who don't believe the same as you, it could be very easy for you to just get a little bit lost. And that is the challenge here for many young Christians is that the influence of non-Christians is greater. So they feel like they have no reason to be, you know, following Christ, you know, because none of their friends are Christians, none of their friends, you know, are interested even in religion at all. So yes, lay a solid foundation, you know, pray, that God would lead you to whatever He wants you to do with your life. Maybe it's uh, nursing, maybe it's theology, maybe it's aviation. Okay, it could be accounting, who knows? But what we do know is that He wants to use your talents to help people that don't know about Him. So have a great day, and I hope that, again, you keep all of us in the other side of the world in your prayers. Thank you.